Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Unity of Wilmington, our spiritual home. Please stand and join me in our opening song. It's a new one this month, so pay attention to the screen. Thank you. <laughs> Next week, we should be terrific. Good morning again. I'm Lainey Mauger. Welcome to Unity of Wilmington, our spiritual home. Uh, and I would like to introduce our cast of characters for today. Christopher Dean is bringing us the sights and sounds, both for here and for those online. Our celebration singers welcomed us in. The cast of Tuck Everlasting will be our soloists. Katie Dean is our musical director. <laughs> Herbert, Herbert Harris is our speaker. And Teresa Rodriguez is our prayer partner for the day. We are reinstituting an old practice, uh, which is a fun one. And that's basically celebrating our existence. It's called the Birthday Sunday. So everybody or anybody who has a birthday here in the month of June, please signify May. May. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> in the month of May, the merry month of May. So would you please signify by raising your hand or standing up, and we'll, we'll sing to you. No May birthdays. OK. Happy birthday. even be in the right month next month. I'll have a whole month to practice. Anybody here for the first time? Terrific. Well, very welcome. We have a welcome pack that you may fill out or not as you choose. Anybody here for the second or third time? Yay, even better. Terrific. Glad you're here. And to all of you out in cyberspace, I'm glad you're here as well. And for the rest of us who keep coming back, it's a great place to be. Our opening prayer is, please join me. There is only one presence and one power active in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotence. And therefore, I am a beloved expression of God. 
I am here for a holy purpose. I am in the right place at the right time right now. Now, where's Teresa? Good morning. morning. And I'm going to read from the um, Daily Word, which is a Unity publication. And this is for May 7th. The Daily Word is free. And the affirmation is, I am one with the freeing, guiding force of God. When I think of freedom, I imagine a bird in flight soaring above the earth. As the bird glides, it seems to effortlessly move through the air. Then it flaps its wings, moving upward and forward against the force of gravity. Likewise, I open my mind and heart and feel the freeing force of God within. This force is powerful and peaceful, and I give myself over to it. As I do, I overcome stifling feelings of stress or doubt. I trust in God, and I move forward and upward and with renewed purpose and confidence. Just as a bird overcomes gravity to fly with purpose, I overcome the challenges and circumstances of my life to find my purpose and live from my divine nature. I am free. And from the Bible, Hebrews 13, verse 6, so we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Thank you, Teresa. And now, the cast of Tuck Everlasting. Once upon a time, once upon a time, can I start like that? Shouldn't start like that. Be patient with me, Winnie. I've never told this before. Once there was a man, a man with a wife and a family. That's Miles and me. Jesse, let me tell the story. I don't want to start a war. We tore from the west to settle in the east, looking for a farm or some land at least. Get to the part where I fall from the tree. No, you've got it all wrong. Miles, Jesse. Then we found the wood. Yes, we found a wood. Can you guess which wood? Mine? You're good. Where we found ourselves a clearing and camps for the night. Just the four of us. Plus the cat and the horse. They play a crucial part. Yes, Miles, of course. We slept by a spring near an old ash tree. And that's where I carved the tea. Jesse? In the morning, in the morning, we had no way of knowing. Without even thinking, we drank from the spring. Who knew that spring would change for the horse everybody drank even the cat remember that and you can lead a horse to water i think she knows the phrase so days went by then months then years lived an ordinary life so it appears the horse died at 25 but the cat was still alive we weren't changing we weren't changing, we weren't changing. We weren't growing. We, we had no way of knowing when nobody was thinking it's because of the spring Change everything. The town began to talk. Winnie, look at me. Well, Winnie, we listen so here. No. We hadn't aged our lives and pious. I survived a our free fall. He survived much worse. Shut up, Jesse. Still, we didn't yes, know. Yes, of course we knew. Know How could we not know? Or where we'd sit on the delicate balance. The greatest the family. And the curse. In the universe. Don't abuse the girl, the cat, and the horse, the tea on the tree, the drink that changed us eternally. That's our secret, keep it locked up tight. But I still don't understand. Enough. All right. We're not aging, we're not growing, and none of us know why. Once upon a time, we drank from the spring, and now we'll never die. And that's the story of the Tux. The end.
That was amazing. Let's give them another big hand. Wow. You know what, young folks, we appreciate you. It's good to see young people doing great things, and you all did a great job. Give them another hand. I keep trying to sing, and maybe it's threatening to sing, you know. But <laughs> you're laughing too much there, Ann. <laughs> I keep threatening to sing, but I tell you, I'm just amazed at the fact that I just love it when young people are doing things. And doing things, because, you know, we get so much negative stuff about the world, but when you see the young people doing things, it's just great. Wow. Thank you so much for being here. What a great audience. This just makes my day. So let us get ready for our message today, and let us do our meditation to put ourselves in the proper space, in the proper vibration, to receive the message. Just sit straight up in your seats, put your feet flat on the floor, close your outer eyes, and take a deep breath. Hold it, let it out slowly. Take a deep breath. And in this space of peace and relaxation, I would like for you to see the beach, the sand upon the beach, and the ocean stretching out as far as you can see. Just let that vision sink in. And as you see the water, you hear the waves crashing gently upon the shore. And as you hear the waves, you feel the wind blow upon your face. Feel the wind just caress your face, caress your entire body. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And in this space, there on the beach, there in the sand. Remember as a child, we played in the sand, and today, we build a sand heart. We pack the sand neatly in the shape of a heart upon the beach. And when you complete that heart, you look at it. You feel the love radiating from that heart. It is good. And as the warmth from that heart just radiates, you can feel it coming into your entire body, bringing a vibration of love, a vibration of peace, a vibration of openness, so that we are open, receptive, and ready to. I am open, receptive, and ready to learn. Let us affirm that together. I am open, receptive, and ready to learn. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And together we say, and so it is. Give yourself a hand.
Thank you so much for being here this Sunday, this magnificent, beautiful Sunday. Those of you in cyberspace, thanks for joining us today. And just join in as though you were here, as though you were a part of this experience. You know, today we're going to share a very timely topic. And considering where we are right now in time and space, it's important. Our topic for today is expanding your consciousness. I would also like to thank, you know, this weekend, these last few days, we've had an incredible experience. And I want to thank Ann Conlon for bringing a program to our church. We call it Our Stories, Dialogue on Race. And just stand. Let us give you a hand. Stand up. <laughs> keep standing. Keep standing. And all of you who participated, we had uh, many church members participate. So all of the participants in the program, please stand. <laughs> Let's give them a big hand. Thank you. You may be seated. i tell you something. We had an experience here in this church that was just magnificent. We got a chance to talk. You know, that's kind of rare these days. <laughs> you know, most people just holler at one another. And then, to the, the top it off, we had an event last night. You know, we were down by the ocean, and we had a good time. I started to sing, but they had a real singer there. <laughs> so, so I didn't do it. But I want to... Two people we met at that event, I want to thank you. We have two guests, Cal Atwood and Jill Hoffman. And Jill, Cal, stand up, and Jill, just give a holler. <laughs> thank you. And, and Jill is head of the Democratic Party, so her work is cut out for her, okay? We're, we're praying for you, okay? <laughs> wow. Also... We have a magnet. My grandson is here. <laughs> Ethan, stand up and show you see how tall you are. <laughs> you know, our grandson, we, we, we have had so many. We were looking at some of the pictures of him as a little boy, and we kept looking up at him like, wow, we didn't think he was going to grow that tall. But I guess he took after me. <laughs> we go to the doctor one day, and the lady says, your height, and I said, 6'4". Andrew, Andre, Andre Brown, Andre, give a stand. Another one of the former head of the Democratic Party. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I said 6'5", and the lady didn't even look up. But then the ultimate, we were, Sandra and I were at the doctor's office on Wednesday, and Sandra got on the scale, and the lady said, 112 pounds. And didn't even, it didn't even register. I'm like, you better read that again, honey. Sandra hasn't been 112 since she was 16. <laughs> <laughs> but it just shows you that people don't pay attention. And so this is a group, this is a church where we pay attention. We give attention and intention to transforming our lives. So before we get into a message, let's... Um, sort of get ourselves conditioned. We believe in the mastermind principle. The mastermind principle says, when two or more gather in one accord, I am among them. And so today, we're all in this room together. We're all creating the message. I may be the speaker, but the message is coming through us. And so whatever we create here today, if it's good, we did it. <laughs> if it's not, you did it. <laughs> But thank you so much for being here. That, that, that feeling of being together is a powerful. That inspires me as a speaker. We also like to do what we call tie-downs. Whenever you hear a message, the more of your senses you can get involved with it, the better. So we do interactive messages here. So if I say, how do you feel, then you say, great. Let's try that again. How do you feel? Great. You know, in the old church, you used to say amen. The minister would come out and say, can I have an amen? And everybody says, amen. amen. So I love those tie-downs because it helps us really center on the message better. I also use affirmations. Now, an affirmation is a statement of truth about yourself. 
You know, in the Bible, when God told Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go, Moses was like most of us. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> he said, uh, what will, who will I say sent me? And God says, tell him, I am sent you. I am is the making power. So whatever you put after I am, you are. So when you say I am healthy, you create a vibration of health. So let's try that together. I am healthy. I am healthy. Yes. How about love? Love is a big theme here at the church. I am love together. I am love. Now we're going to do the one that gets you going. I am beautiful through and through. You can't just say it. You got it. I am beautiful through and through. Let's do it together. I am beautiful through and through. Give yourselves a hand. Wow. <laughs> now, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We move and have our being on a spiritual plane. So our bodies are just a temporary housing for a spirit, an eternal spirit that was created by God. I use the Bible as a, as a point of reference, as a book of instruction, because within the Bible there are principles, and all the holy books, if you read them parallel, very much say very many of the same things, that there are certain principles to live by. And so I use this, these principles, scripture, give scripture, but we want to get the meaning of the scripture. Sometimes people just say the words. When I was uh, studying, I was a group, a group of ministers who, they knew every scripture in the book. But did you understand it? Could you use it? Could you put it into play? So we like to put the, the scriptures into play. I opened with a quote from Ken Robinson. He said, creativity is putting your imagination to work. It has produced the most extraordinary results in human culture. Einstein said creativity is imagination having fun. And so today our theme is expanding your creativity. The more creative you are, the more capable you are to handle anything that happens. This topic is so profound because today, you know, last Sunday we were talking about the fact that a third of the year is already gone. And so we're going forward. Last, last week we did a checkup from the neck up in our thinking, from the heart down in our feelings. This week we're looking at what tools do we have to help us go forward to help us get us on the right path, to keep us on the right path. And creativity is your most powerful tool. Creativity is based on imagination. Imagination, we, we, as a matter of fact, we, we read from our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success, and just remind everybody about our course coming up on May 20th. You see the fly around using the, the 12 universal laws of success right here, 9.30 to 1.30 on May 20th, and you can sign up outside. But the idea is your imagination gives you the ability to connect your conscious mind, your head, your subconscious mind, your heart, and the superconscious mind, the God mind. And so when you imagine things, Imagination gives you the ability to see things that are not present to your senses. If we only saw what we've only seen, <laughs> we'll never get anywhere. And that's the unique, unique quality of man. We have the ability to connect with infinite intelligence. If you notice, alligators have been around for millions of years, and they have not built one co-op. <laughs> They've not done one painting. And so truly, man is very unique because we are able to plug into infinite intelligence through our imagination and see things that never were as though they are. There are two types of creativity. There's synthetic creativity. Edison is an example of synthetic creativity. Synthetic creativity, you take the things that exist 
and you create something new. So what Edison did, he was a trial and error person. <laughs> you know, when he was working to find the electric bulb or the filament, they say that he spent thousands of time failing. One reporter said, Mr. Edison, you failed over 3,000 times to find this so-called filament. He says, no, 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 I have never failed. I have successfully identified 3,000 ways that will not work. <laughs> so his attitude kept him going. <laughs> but now Tesla, Tesla was different. You know, I don't know if you know, Tesla actually worked for Edison. He came from Europe and he worked from, for Edison. And they fell out. Edison gave Tesla a problem to solve and, offered, and said he would pay him $50,000. It was a technical problem. Tesla solved it in two weeks, and Edison wouldn't pay him. <laughs> so that's how they split up. But Tesla's creative process was what we call creative imagination. He would go into his imagination, he would connect to infinite intelligence, and he could see things on a big scale, and then in his conscious mind, he could translate it into a, actually what he had to do. The, the light in this room, this is alternating current. Tesla. <laughs> okay. When you really get down to it, before Marconi had actually invented the radio, Tesla had done it. Edison and Tesla fought for years. Edison had better lawyers. <laughs> I mean, they tied Tesla up for years with his patents. I mean, one of his patents, Edison objected, and I think 25 years after Tesla died, they finally said, hey, Tesla's the one. But it's the power of synthetic creativity that you can delve into what you have no feeling and no relationship with and see beyond your present to the future, to other things. So your imagination is the connecting link between you and infinite intelligence, the God mind. Creativity is the process to use it. You see, many people have dreams and do nothing with them. Tesla would have a dream and then he'd do something with it. And then one day, you know, one of these days we're going to have an hour-long service. And I can go into all the, like, Edgar Cayce. And if you ever read about Edgar Cayce, Cayce could dream up things, and I mean, he must be very effective because many presidents would listen to what he had to say because he could connect to that infinite intelligence. So whatever you can connect to in your imagination, through creativity, you can put it into play. So our topic, how do you expand your creativity? Well, number one, you expand it by expanding your imagination. The more you can see, the more you can be. But there are seven key steps. The number one step, to expanding your creativity is to believe that you have creativity. You know, many people shortchange themselves, well, I can never play a guitar. I can never learn to sing. I can, I, I'm definitely not going to take one of those hard courses. But the moment you acknowledge that you have the power of creativity, then you can handle any obstacle. When you look at a challenge, no matter what the circumstances, you actually have the ability to rise above it. Think about, you know, one of the great spiritual lessons is the prodigal son. The, the message there is the prodigal son got his inheritance and he went off into the far country. And the far country is any place <laughs> where you shouldn't be. <laughs> okay. He went off into the far country, parted his money away and ended up in the pig pens of life. He could have said, well, I guess this is where I belong. And so any, many times in our own lives, we'll be in situations, and we accept it. Man, I've been a bad person. All these bad things are happening to me. I deserve it. But the prodigal son did something powerful. He saw beyond his circumstances to his potential. He saw beyond his circumstances to his source. He said, I will arise, which means I will change my thinking, and I will go to my father. I'll go to my source. So the lesson from point one of your creativity is no matter what circumstances you ex experience in your life, you have the creative ability to handle it. You can rise to the occasion. 
we live in a forest. Many of us live in a forest, and all we see are trees, trees of mediocrity, trees of challenge. But we can see above the trees to the mountain, and we see possibilities. And so this idea of creativity says that you can create anything you need. The second law of success from the book of Romans, second chapter, and it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. So whatever your state of being right now, you can change your thinking and change your condition. Tawana Williams is a motivational speaker, a good friend of ours, and she was a thalidomide baby, born without arms. And most people might think, that's a problem. <laughs> You were born without arms. You may have some serious limitations. And in her early life, people had to feed her, had to clothe her and everything. And one day her grandmother said, you're going to have to learn how to do it on your own. And when she came home, there was nobody there. And she said, her grandmother always told her, figure it out. When we have the creative ability, we can figure it out. So anything you're facing right now, I want to ask you to raise your hand if you're having a challenge, because I know most of us have challenges somewhere. But you can, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we have one honest person. <laughs> OK, thank you so much. But when you, whatever challenge you have, your creativity can get you through it. So step one is to acknowledge that you have the power of creativity. I have the power of creativity. Let us say that together. I have the power of creativity. Step two, become an expert. Now, I, when I've shared this message, I'm like, I can't become, how do you become an expert? Become an expert means that you do the best that you can with what you have to do it with. Anything you focus on grows. So if you have a challenge in your life and you focus on the challenge, you'll stay stuck. But if you focus on the solution, you'll get free. There's a great scripture, Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, the tenth verse, and it says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. And so this says, become an expert. Whatever you have to do, do it with all your might. The more you know about any particular area, the better you are able to handle it. You know, when we climb the mountain of consciousness, I love this image that life is about always climbing to higher levels because the more you know, the more you can be. The more you be, the more you can see. And every time you climb a mountain, there's some people now, you know, the, was it the sher Sherpas who get you to a level. And there's some people, when they start climbing the mountain of consciousness, they get to a point where they're like, I'm good. I don't want to go any further. And that's fine, because everybody knows their station. But there are others, and I think one of the watchwords of the whole unity ministry is that we're all striving to be better. And so when you get to the top of one mountain, you see there's another one. Whatever you do, become expert at it. Study and learn everything you can about it. The more you know from a factual basis, the more ammunition you give to your imagination. See, one of the beauties of exposure is that the more that you've been exposed to gives your imagination a bigger platform now to connect with infinite intelligence. The man who's never left home thinks his mother's the best cook. <laughs> but once you've gone out in the world and had some Chinese food and Japanese, when I was a kid, I always wanted to get two things. I grew up in Wilmington, North Carolina. The two things I wanted was Chinese food and yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese food, because when the Chinese restaurant opened, it was in the era of segregation. We couldn't go to the Chinese restaurant. And they wouldn't serve you from the back, so you couldn't ever get. So I always wanted Chinese food. And yogurt, we had a TV, six inches. <laughs> I know your kids are never going to. When I was a kid, TV screens were this big, and you sat up on it, and you said, I think I see something. <laughs> but their yogurt, they made it look so good. So when I got to New York, I bought some yogurt. 
I didn't know it came in flavors. <laughs> I got plain yogurt. <laughs> to this day, <laughs> I don't like yogurt. <laughs> so Oprah Winfrey said something, and it's a great affirmation. When you know better, you do better. Let's say that together. When you know better, you do better. Let's put it in the personal. When I know better, I do better. Number three, to help expand your creativity. Always believe it can be done. Whatever solution you're in right now, always know there's a positive outcome. One of the most powerful questions you can ask yourself is what is the good lesson from this experience? When David faced Goliath. David asked himself, what's the good lesson I can learn from going out here and facing this giant? I'm sure in his imagination he said, I can become king. <laughs> and so many of us in our situations and the challenges that we have, once we look at believe that it can be done, whatever you believe becomes real. The first law of success says, as a mind, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So whatever you believe becomes real. The moment you believe it can be done, it can be done. Henry Ford said, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So as we go forward now, believe we can do it. Believe it can be done. I believe I can do it. Let's say that together. I believe I can do it. Step four to expand your creativity. Eliminate the word impossible from your vocabulary. I was looking at the word impossible, and if you broke it up, it really says, I'm possible. So when you eliminate the word impossible from your vocabulary, you now only think of possibilities. Everything is possible. Let's say that together. Everything is possible. There's a great scripture, Mark, the ninth chapter, 23rd verse, and it says, all things are possible to him that believeth. That's why I love going through the Bible and seeing all things are possible to him that believe it. So now when I'm faced with a challenge and you're faced with a challenge, then you say, what's the good lesson I can learn from this situation? You've opened the channel for, the, for it to come. Step five. Now, this is a good one. Do not fear failure or criticism. Every creative person, somebody's told them they couldn't do it. Somebody said they were crazy. I know the Wright brothers, when they were, we're going to fly. Yeah, right, fix these bicycles, OK? Leonardo da Vinci, when he, when he wanted to fly. But it's interesting, whenever you face the challenge, you deal with it at your level of consciousness. When Leonardo da Vinci dealt with consciousness, he saw flying in terms of a bird. His drawings were, had feathers and wings. When the Wright brothers saw flying, they saw it in terms of bicycles. <laughs> and machines. And so as you raise your level of consciousness, you can see more. So the very thing that was a problem at one level, at another level of consciousness, ah, it's a piece of cake. Criticism is often a weapon used by people who have no ideas of their own. If you go throughout the world, I have never seen a statue to a critic. <laughs> you go to Rome, you go to Paris, you, you'll never see a statue erected to a critic. So don't fear failure. Don't fear criticism. When you know you have the power to do things, nothing can stop you. Failure is a dress rehearsal for success. There's no such thing. You either win or you learn. So when things don't work, it's just a dress rehearsal. I know the success is coming. I just got to change my thinking. 
I just got to change my emotions. Maybe I think I can't. Now let me change my feelings. Maybe it's my habits. Maybe it's the people I'm running with. Failure is a dress rehearsal for success. Let's say that together. Failure is a dress rehearsal for success. Number six, be open and receptive to new ideas. You know, creativity is so powerful, but you have to feed your cre <coughs> excuse me, you have to feed your creative mind. When you're open and receptive to new ideas, you're literally feeding and expanding your exposure. Many times you have to set aside your ego. Sometimes you hear a good idea and you don't pay attention because of who said it. But to set aside your ego and understand that if you're in the box, and many of us are in the box, if you're in the box, to get out of that box, you need to think outside the box. If you're in the box, you can't think outside the box. You need to go beyond that. Look outside for new ideas. I have a friend that has more degrees than a thermometer. <laughs> I mean, she's got three or four PhDs. Hard to deal with. But if you ever see him try to change a flat tire. <laughs> so now he's receptive. <laughs> Couldn't tell him a word, but then when that flat tire man, the guy comes up, doesn't have any degrees, hadn't been to any school, and he said, this is a lug wrench. <laughs> that PhD goes, what'd you say? <laughs> I am open and receptive to new ideas together. I am open and receptive to new ideas. And finally, number seven, challenge yourself. You know, the outside world doesn't necessarily challenge you in a positive way. You choose to challenge yourself in a positive way by saying, hey, I can be better. Be committed to going and growing. I love this affirmation, and I think it sums it up. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. Let us say that together. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. So let me recap and summarize. Was this instructive today? Yes. Yeah. Because you have the power to face any challenge. Sometimes you just have to reframe your attitude. You know, I, look, I think about David and Goliath, and you could, that you could look at it and say, David, you're a little boy, and there's a big old giant. You're going to kill him with a slingshot? That's ridiculous. But then the other attitude, David said, as big as he is, I can't miss. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the attitude and how you think. So let me recap. We've covered a lot today. How do you become more creative, number one? Commit yourself to being creative. Understand that you have the power to be creative. Number two, become an expert. Whatever challenges face you, whatever endeavors, learn everything you can about it. Number three, always believe it can be done. No matter what the challenge, ask that question, what's the good lesson I can learn? Number four, eliminate the word impossible from your vocabulary and from your thinking. Impossible is a lot like weeds. We just had a great garden party here. We planted beautiful flowers outside. Your flowers are your good ideas, but we got to pull up the weeds. If you plant flowers alone and don't pull up weeds, the weeds will choke your flowers. Number five, do not be a failure. Failure is a dress rehearsal for success. Number six, be open and receptive to new ideas, feeding your mind with knowledge. And finally, number seven, challenge yourself to always be better tomorrow than you were today. So let us stand and close out together. All right. Wait a minute, I forgot something. Creativity, why are you standing? This is a bag of marbles. Bought it in Walmart. Sandra loves marbles. 
At first, I thought she had lost her marbles. <laughs> but then she applied creativity to the marbles and created a work of art. So you have the power to create anything you desire. So let us close out. I have the power to create anything I desire. I have the power to create anything I desire. I am an expert at living. I believe in myself. Everything is possible. Failure is a dress rehearsal for success. I am open and receptive to new ideas. Every day and every way, I get better and better. Maybe we need to do a little wiggle with that one. Let's try that one more time. Every day, in every way, I get better and better. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Woo! Wow, you all are a great audience. You know, the audience makes the speaker. It's time to uh, take up our collection, our offering. And, and let me share this with you. I appreciate everybody's presence and those online. This church is growing. This church is like an oasis in a sea of, oh man, discord, darkness. And to make this church grow better and bigger and faster, we need your help. To be a part of this, to contribute to this growth, to come out, we want your presence. <laughs> okay. But also, we'd like your money substance. <laughs> because it helps the church grow and helps us do so many things. And when you do a visualization and you see this room full, and you see us doing two services a day, it'll be because you gave from your heart. Let us do the uh, giving affirmation together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. So take up the collection, Katie. With the grandfather clock Where I would teach time to my son Our lessons began At twelve o'clock sharp When the hands would come in as one I'd say the big hand counts the minutes It's so tightly wound It chases the small hand Make hours go round. I taught Thomas constellations in the sky, how to tell a silver maple from a cotton wood. I taught Thomas to divide and multiply, but what he Never understood. His time as I watched him grow, time. he would never know time where my regret resides. Time, if I only knew the what and how and to that time. Bet you didn't know that the sun took a shine to water. She drinks up a bit, lifts it up to the sky. Now what she takes from our lake will make her a storm cloud that rumbles and tumbles with rain from up high, high, high. It's so weird. Ours. 
sun to lake to cloud that showers rain back to the lake below and you'll ride that wheel wherever you go there are two ways home I could return to my mother like nothing has happened Live like an imposter for six long years Turn 17, then good girl Winnie Foster Drinks from the vial and her past disappears me dancing and everything fell into place my hair tied like so with a blackberry bow a night in november and i will remember 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 the day my most beautiful day for the rest of my step find a sturdy branch don't you dare look down pull your body up dig in your heels let's see what this tree reveals just a few more feet we're almost at the top watch the robin's nest pull your body up till you've broken through let's see if this tree has a view at the top at the top at the top of the world you're drawing back a curtain at the top at the top at the top of the world there you know for certain you're alive and you are free so follow me to the top of the world
Tuck Everlasting. Wow. Woo! <laughs> Katie, and you did it. Uh, no, they did it. <laughs> you, yeah, but you, you, know, you got to have a captain of the ship. <laughs> okay, let's give Katie a big hand. <laughs> wow. It made you just feel something inside, didn't it? Let us be still inside a moment. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And in this space of peace and giving, we give thanks for this offering from each and every one of you in the sanctuary today. We know that you've given it from the heart. You've given it from love. And you've given it from purpose. We give thanks to those who've given online, knowing that you support this ministry to help us grow help us take our place to change the world. We give thanks for this never-ending cycle of increase and enjoyment to do your work, to do good work, and to transform each and every one of us to be our best selves. And together we say, and so it is. Laney, I tell you. <laughs> Wow. We are definitely and truly blessed. Thank you very much for sharing your talents with us. All good things must come to an end, and so too does this service. Uh, the announcements for the day are our prayer partner is Teresa Rodriguez. She will join you over there if you'd like to join her in prayerfulness. If you do, if you would like to pray with her, there's a prayer box where you can write in your prayerful requests, and uh, that will be prayed here for 30 days and be prayed out in silent unity for another 30 days. So please avail yourself of whatever support you would want and need. And also today, we have the availability of the oneness blessing, uh, if you so desire. It will be available after the service in, the, in front of the sound booth. So join yourselves for that. On the 17th of the month, which is a Wednesday, our monthly meditation and prayer event will be Kirtan. So that'll be at 7 o'clock on that day. If you've not participated in Kirtan, she's here every twice a month on the second and fourth Sundays, please join us. It's a prayerful, chanting, somewhat musical ability because you play timpani-type instruments, and it's fun. It's delightful, so please join us for Curtan on the 17th. The last thing is that uh, Dr. Harris's program on the 20th sign-up sheet is in the, for, in the uh, fellowship hall. Please sign up, it's 12 Steps to Success. Thank you. Now, please join me in our closing prayer. Stand up, please. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well.
lift us. May the wisdom of God bring us clarity. May the power of God surround and protect us and make smooth, beautiful, and perfect our way. And until we meet again, and so it is.